Hello, my name is Stephen Daniel with the Advice Serviceability Engineering team. This video is about how you can configure alarm forwarding from your Secure Access Link Gateway to an external network management system using SNMP v2 or SNMP v3. With Secure Access Link Gateway, it is possible to forward any alarms that your gateway generates or receives from your Avaya managed devices to an external NMS. You can configure your cell gateway to forward SNMP traps to your NMS using SNMP v2c with version 1.8 of the gateway or SNMP v2c or v3 with version 2.x or greater. Please keep the following in mind as you make these configuration changes. In order to receive SNMP traps, you'll need to make sure UDP port 162 is open in your network from the gateway to your NMS. For gateway version 2.x or greater, you can only configure an SNMP v2c or v3 trap destination and not both simultaneously. Also, you will still need to load the appropriate standard or enterprise product MIBs into your NMS to properly view your device alarms. The cell gateway uses the Avaya INADS MIB, which can be downloaded from support.avaya.com. And finally, configuring your NMS to forward SNMP traps does not configure your cell gateway for SNMP queries on port 161. Please refer to the cell gateway implementation guide for steps on how to install and configure the NET SNMP framework on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system to support SNMP GET operations. Begin by logging into your cell gateway with a user that has administrator level permissions or higher. Once authenticated, on the left navigation pane, click on the administration link to expand the list of submenu items. Next, click on the NMS link. From this page, we can add either a SNMP v2c or SNMP v3 NMS destination, but as mentioned earlier, you'll need to select one or the other. For this tutorial, I will still demonstrate how to configure both. Let's begin with v2c. First, make sure the radio button for v2c is clicked, then click add to open up the details page. Here, you'll need to provide three things. The NMS hostname or IP address of your NMS server, the NMS trap listening port, and the NMS public community string. Once all three fields have been populated, click apply. Or if you would like to add a second V2C entry, you can also click add to add another, then click apply. In this tutorial, we are only adding one, so I'll click apply. We are now prompted to restart our gateway services for this to take effect, so I'll do that now. Total service restart time is about one to two minutes, but has been accelerated here for demonstration purposes. Great, now that we have our V2C entry, let's go ahead and delete it so we can add our V3 entry. To return to our NMS configuration page, let's click on the NMS link on the left navigation menu once again. Now, place a tick in the checkbox next to your NMS entry then click Delete to remove this entry. The gateway is again prompting us to restart our services, but let's hold off on doing this until after we've added our SNMP v3 entry. This time, make sure the v3 radio button is checked, then click Add. You can see when compared to v2c, we have a few more fields to fill out. Like before, we'll still need to add the IP address or hostname of the NMS server and the NMS trap listening port. In addition to this, however, we'll also need to provide authentication credentials. In the username field, enter the username configured for the SNMP entity of the NMS location. In the PRIV protocol column, enter AES or DES as the authentication protocol configured for the SNMP entity of your NMS. In the PRIV password column, enter the password that is configured for the SNMP entity of the NMS. In the auth protocol column, enter MD5 or SHA as the protocol configured for your NMS server. In the auth password column, enter the password that is configured for the authentication protocol for the SNMP entity of the NMS server. And finally, click apply. Now we can go ahead and restart our gateway services. We'll click the link above here. We'll then click apply one more time. And once the services have been restarted, our changes will take effect. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya.mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.